Help support the companies that support our community. I want to welcome Brent English to the shop today. Hey, thanks, Carl. Thank you for coming by and staying a couple extra days after the show. Yeah. And had a great time at the show. We had a great time at AAW, a great crowd, and I know the people were all over the place looking at you down at the Easy Wood Tools booth. A lot of excitement going on. It was so there. cool to be able to bring the mobile shop in there and, and had a great time. Yeah, so yeah. Got to meet so many people. It was a lot of fun. Well, Carl, you and I are both makers. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We, and I want to talk to you a little bit about how you got started making legs. Well, you know, um, one of the hardest things to do is to make tools for people who make things. And uh, so I've been a maker all my life. Since I was a little boy, I've been a maker. And I remember in kindergarten making little things. And some of them that my mom kept and put on the shelf Still for has. years and years and years. And even uh, in eighth grade uh, shop class, I made this little wall shelf. And my mom kept it in her kitchen until the day that she died. And then my daughter has it now, and she has it hanging in her kitchen, That's awesome. you know? Cool. So I've always been involved in making things. Yeah. And uh, like a lot of people, I was turning wood in high school, right? Remember high school? I remember. A long time ago. Yeah, a long time ago. <laughs> and um, uh, after, after high school, uh, I wanted to continue what I was doing with making things, so I went and became a machinist. I worked 10 years as a machinist. And after, that was after getting a two-year technical degree in, in uh, running machine tools. And after 10 years, I got tired of busting my knuckles, and I went to college. And I got a, uh, I got a bachelor's degree in manufacturing engineering, and I really had aspirations to be a shop teacher. So I have a master's degree, yeah, I have a master's degree in tech ed. No. And uh, I didn't get involved in tech ed, but I got involved in product development, making products. Mm -hmm. And either as an engineer or as a project manager in the engineering department. Right, right. Yeah. So uh, one day, um, we live on the country, and um, one day I had a big box elder blow down in a windstorm, and it was covered with burls. And a friend of mine was a wood turner, and he came out and uh, he cut off a bunch of the burls. And he left some for me. And I had a little metal lathe in my shop. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so I took it in my shop and I mounted it on my metal lathe. I made a little face plate. And then I was using cabinet maker chisels as scrapers, right? Yeah. So, this is before carbide tools and right. everything. And I didn't know anything about wood turning, you know, modern stuff with gougers and whatnot. Yeah. And I'm just in there kind of cramming <laughs> away with, with wood chisels. Right. Yeah, well, I had a ball. Okay. I really had a ball. Yeah. And I got into wood turning. After that. Oh, hook, line, and sinker. That's awesome. So I bought a, I bought an antique lathe, and I started doing craft shows, and I was turning hundreds of bowls a year. Just no oh. not so. Yeah. You know. So the same the same friend who got me into wood turning, uh, he came out and he said, uh, you know everything you know about metal fabrication and everything you know about product development, you ought to make a lathe, and he meant. You know, you ought to make yourself a lathe. Right, right. And I, I knew uh, in product design, if you want your design to be really uh, robust, you have it critiqued. You have other people look at it. Because if they don't kill it, it'll get stronger. So I designed what became the American Beauty, what you have right here, Carl. Right. And um, when folks saw the design, they said, you know, you ought to make that. You know, back to the maker thing. You ought to make that right. for people, and they would buy it. Right. And so I started in my garage. I bought a, I bought a Bridgeport milling machine, old, wore out, beat up Bridgeport milling machine, and I bought an old metal lathe, and I bought a used welder, and evenings and weekends, I started making these one at a time. And the first ones were actually welded up in my driveway. I didn't even have, didn't, I didn't even have a place to weld them up you know, inside right. my garage. Right. And so I was welding them up in my, in my driveway. <laughs> and uh, I made a little lean-to on the back of the garage, yeah. and I converted that into the into the welding, welding. shop. Yeah, <laughs> welding. And you know, and it grew it grew there uh, just organically. And right. I had I got my first employee while we were still in the garage, and he's still with us over ten years later. He's a key guy. His name is Rich. Shout out to Rich if you're watching. Hey, Rich. <laughs> and. Uh, um, we, now we have uh, five full-time employees in the shop, and it's my wife and myself, and we make 
wood turning tools for people who make things on a lathe like you do. Very nice, very nice. Well, yeah. I didn't see. I didn't know that. And that when I uh, got to meet everybody at the robust shop when we went back there and did the open house, which was a lot of fun. Yeah, so, yeah. I didn't didn't realize that you know you just kind of start making them because one of your attorney friends asked me. Right, right. So, well, I mean, you came, you came out of the house and you parked right in front of the garage, right? right? Of the well, I parked right in the welding. Oh, yeah, right in the <laughs> parked really close to the welding area. I, got, I have my tractor there now. My garden tractor <laughs> is living where the where the welding shop yeah. was. But, but Carl, now, how did, how did you get going and how did you get going in wood turning? What's your backstory? Um, I, same thing. I, my grandpa, I lived with them for a little while, so he was a woodworker. Been doing woodworking since I was old enough to walk. He had me out. out the shop and uh, did a little bit of wood turning in, in uh, school, you know, in high school and, and middle school. And uh, I really didn't get into it. He wasn't a wood turner, but um, I, mid 20s, I went down to another friend's house. He was a woodworker too, but he had a lathe and he had, he had turned a clock just a couple days before that. And it, I think it was like oak and walnut. Uh -huh. um, but anyway, he had to hang in, hanging right up in, in his garage. And I said, how'd you, you know, how'd you make that? It just looked you know, cool. It was, you know, too segmented, you know, just glued two pieces together. Um, so we played around on the on his lathe for a little bit that weekend, and by the time I got home, I was... You were what? Yeah, we didn't have Craigslist back then, so I was flipping through the newspaper, found an old lathe in it, and uh, and I just, just kept upgrading from there. Yeah. I upgraded to the very top. Well, I, well, <laughs> I, well, I appreciate you saying that. Now, but Carl, you're not a traditional wood turner. No, no. I you know, don't. I mean, you, not. you're not a traditional wood turner. When I think of a traditional wood turner, they're always using a skew chisel and they've got gouges and whatnot, and they're right. doing stuff and they're doing traditional wood turning projects. But you're kind of taking a whole different, yeah. a different spin with this. Yeah, I, I basically I enjoy making things, and whatever I can use to make things. I'm good with that. I use carbide and uh, use the easy wood and gouges all the time to make different things. I enjoy the variety of projects more than I'm not a bowl turner. I don't I don't want to make bowls all day long or you know something like that. I want to try and just do a variety as many things as I can. I'm not you know when I do demos they ask me you know well, what do you want to demo? Go pick a video you know and. And we'll, you know, if you guys see a video you like on something, we'll do a demo on that. So it's, I, whatever I can use to make the project, that's what I use. I think that's what I hear, Carl, too, because, you know, as you know, we sponsor you. And uh, the feedback that I get from my customers or people that, like, at the AAW that just recently closed this last weekend, people come up and they say, I really like the variety that Carl's doing. I really like the, the crazy ideas he comes up with and how he gets it executed and that creativity. And how do you think of something new every week to come out here and do? <laughs> Robin and I... We spend a lot of time just researching different things, um, just coming up with ideas for different projects. So it's, I, I think, where I get the most, uh, you know, enjoyment out of is coming up with a project that you wouldn't think would be turned on a lathe. Like it, the Millennium Falcon is yeah. one that comes to my mind. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, who would have done that? Yeah, and it's, you know, I mean, that right there is, you know, I mean, I've never seen one, you know, made on a lathe or, you know, it's like a jellyfish lamp or, or, mm -hmm. or we did the Enterprise, Star, you know, Star Trek Enterprise. Right, right. So it's, it's stuff like that. I, I enjoy that, the making something out of wood and figuring out how to turn pieces on it. You know, I do a lot of carving and, and stuff off the lathe too to make, make little things. Oh, well, that whale, that whale that it just finished was, was a fun project. You did yeah, a little turning yeah. and then Arbitec, uh, yeah. uh to do the finishing and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a buddy of mine asked me to make a trophy for his golf, for his <laughs> golf league. And, <laughs> can you make a whale? I've never made a whale before. Oh, but that's, that's what I like, is if somebody asks me to make something, I enjoy that whole process of, I've never done it before, let's go out in the shop and see if we can do it. Well, I think that's part of being a non-traditional wood turner, yeah. is you're taking on all these non-traditional products, projects, and then you're showing people who aren't wood turners the fun that you can do to uh, augment what they do as a maker. Right. 
and make things with the lathe and use that as an additional tool, yep. as additional uh, fixture, sometimes even just for work holding. I, I a know. carving stand, maybe it's a big, car a big expensive carving stand. <laughs> yeah. But you can do more things with it. Exactly. And yeah. it's, you know, no matter what you're making, you can, you know, use the lathe to turn parts, you know, for and piece them together to, to you know, you know, it just embellish what you're doing, and I think that's another reason why I was drawn to wood turning. It was, it was after spending that a couple of days with my buddy. It was how fast you can get a project done. Oh, it's a gratification. Yeah, absolutely. So I can come out here and, and, you know, I mean, if I'm making a box or something, I can be done in an hour. Right. And it's it's a finished piece. Right. You know, I'm not working on it for two weeks. But like most of the videos we do, um, most of those projects, they take me a couple of days. Yeah, to, you know, come out here and, and I think a lot of it, you know, the filming, being you know, having to move the camera around. With you. Yeah, that takes make, some well, time. You have to stage a shot. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, one of the things I tell people who are coming to wood turning from flat woodworking is that uh, one of the great things is you can throw away your tape measure right. a lot of times. And you just, if you have a hunk of wood and you're going to make something out of it, yeah. be it a lidded box, you don't need a tape measure to make right. a lidded box. Yeah. You just, you do that by fit and feel, yep. you yep. know, and uh, it just opens up the creativity so much. Yeah. So Carl, one of the to, to me, one of the things that I always like to tell wood turners is uh, that are people that are getting into wood turning or they want to use the lathe as a maker is uh, the creativity that's involved in the whole process, right? If I gave you a six inch board and I gave me a six inch board and I gave a half a dozen other people a six inch board and we all went over to the table saw and we said, okay, we're going to make four inch boards out of the six inch board and we laid them all out on the table, I couldn't pick out mine from yours or from anybody else. But, you know, if we grab a piece of wood like this and we say we're going to make a bowl, well, we throw away the tape measure and we all pop, we all put the wood <clears throat> on the lathe and we all grab different tools right. and we all use our different eyes and our different hands to guide the tool and we get all done with those pieces and we lay them all out and we have six different pieces. Six different balls, yeah. Everybody's got their own style and their own take and their own approach to it. Yeah. Yeah, their own yeah. spin on it. Yeah. I like that, Carl, their <laughs> own spin on it. And uh, that's what makes wood turning so exciting to me. Right. But uh, you said we were going to make something out of this. We are. Let's go ahead and you want to do some turning? Yeah, let's give it a try. Have you ever used one of these before? I, I, I might have used one once or twice. <laughs> all right. Okay. Let's get to it. Let's get started. <laughs> all right, we got it all mounted up. We're going to start turning. And what are you going to start out with? Well, I don't know. I've got a well. We've got a nice piece of we got a nice piece of walnut here, you know. And and Carl, I've always been more of a traditionalist when it comes to wood turning, using gouges and everything. So I've never really had an opportunity uh, to use Easy Wood Tools, who I'll plug as one of your sponsors <laughs> along with us. And so I'm going to give a Easy Wood Tool uh, tool a chance. All right. Okay. All right. And uh, we're just going to go for a little bowl here. Maybe when we're all done, I'll take this home and I can eat peanuts out of it. Here we go. Okay. So when I start turning, I always start with the RPM all the way down. I've already checked it to make sure it clears my tool rest, uh, and it does. And I'm going to turn up the speed a little bit here, get my face shield down. I like I have a little uh, on a little bowl like this. I like to have a little return. Well, to make my uh, to make the final cuts, I'm going to go with something I've got a little bit more experience with. The Easy Wood Tools thing worked really great for getting it roughed out, and uh, but now I'm more comfortable with a traditional gouge, so I'm going to slip back into my traditional mode. All right.
I use this one a lot. This is a number one hauler and it really just cleans out the material fast. They live live up in Seattle. Yeah, they go they go to the Seattle area. Carl, I just want to say. For a guy who's supposed to be a non-traditionalist, that was an awful nice cut with a traditional wood gouge. Well, thank you. Yeah, that was nice, <laughs> smooth, and clean. You look great. All right, then we're just going to sand up the inside of this. Same process, just go through all the grits. Um, we have a, a pretty soft piece of wood, so I have a little, little torn grain on it, a couple little spots. I'm going to start out with 120, turn the lathe speed back down. Again with the Howard. Right through all the grit. Just wipe it off in between each grit. Get that out of there. There you go. Oh man, Carl, this is really exciting. Uh, I got a special place for this on my desk Whoa. back at the shop. I'm going to put it right there. And every time I reach for some peanuts, I'll be thinking of you. Okay? <laughs> Hey, Carl, I can't be more excited about being here, and thank you so much for having thank, me out to your shop. Thank you so much for stopping by and spending a couple extra days here. And Yeah, yeah okay. very cool. Been very my cool. pleasure. Great. I hope you enjoyed that. It was really nice having Brent here in the shop, and it was interesting to find out exactly how he got started making lays. I hadn't heard that story before. We had a great time at the AAW show. All right, till next time, take care.